Finally, yes, you've probably found this video coming from my Danny makeup video, or maybe you're just curious how to make yourself a chest and some dragon eggs. This project took me a total of 16 hours working time. I found this lovely plain chest at Hobby Lobby. Got my measuring tape out, went to Joann's, got some vinyl fabric, because I thought, you know, that would be the easiest thing to cut all these shapes out of. I also considered doing it in plastic, like maybe a placemat, but this is what I ended up using. I then just took the measurements of the front of the chest as well as the top of the chest, so I had an idea of what shapes I was going to be cutting out and how much room I had to cut out said shapes. It was also easiest for me to use silver paint. You could probably use a silver sharpie, I don't see why not, just to sketch out what my design was going to be. There's very few references of the actual chest in the show, so not only did I look through the show, but I also asked friends, I also asked people on the internet, and used other chests as references. So we're going to get as close as we possibly can. I then cut out all the shapes for the chest. Some of these patterns actually had patterns within them that needed to be cut out as well. A lot of people actually don't know how to cut a hole in the middle of something that is solid. I actually didn't know until a couple years ago. If you fold the item in half, you can make a diamond shape, pop that out, and then stick your scissors in the middle. I personally always just cut the edge and then just glued it back together, but this makes more sense. Now some pieces will have other pieces that need to go on top of it. Details, if you will. The easiest way I found to make these details was to trace the original pattern, then just make your piece smaller that you need to put on top of that. Make sure it fits, add a little bit of glue, and just stick it on. Now, some pieces actually need three layers of fabric, which is three layers of detail. This takes quite some time, and it is a process, and majority of the pieces have a double detail layer. So I retraced all of those pieces, and then cut all of those pieces out. I definitely made sure that I used scrap pieces, just so I wasn't wasting any of the fabric. When you have the whole top cut out, it should look like this. One of the most satisfying pieces to make was the actual front piece because there was so many layers and it was all on one singular piece. Found these little wood, I don't know what they are, buttons? Maybe at Michael's, but I thought they'd definitely be a good addition to the top. Placed those on and placed all the pieces on just to make sure that everything fit. Also don't forget about your side diamonds. I then wanted to make sure in addition that the pieces were going to fit around the lock to open the chest, that way it wasn't just kind of awkwardly not fitting at all. And I made sure that the chest could still open and close without the two pieces of fabric hitting each other. Remove all those pieces because you don't need them right now, we're going to stain the box, which you, we, technically you probably could have done that before you did all these pieces, but I did it in the opposite order. I used this wood wax that I found at Michael's, I ended up having to seal this later on using some clear Mod Podge, because for whatever reason it didn't want to stick to the chest, I also didn't sand the chest, so that might have been problem number one. But once it was sealed, it worked out, so I also wiped some of the wax off and made sure that I cleaned up all the hardware. While that was drying, I started my personal favorite, which was the dragon eggs. I found these styrofoam eggs at Michael's as well as thumbtacks at mm, Office Depot, I think might have been Hobby Lobby, might have been both. And you just want to start at the bottom of the egg, pretty much right in the center, and just keep layering them until you reach the top. Each egg for an egg this size and thumbtacks this size was about 800 thumbtacks per egg. It really didn't take me all that long because I was watching episodes while I was doing the eggs, so I think it took me maybe like 45 minutes an egg. It really wasn't that bad. Once you have all three done, which clearly I ran out of the same color thumbtacks and couldn't find them anywhere because I bought them from all of the stores, the people at the store are probably like, what on earth? This girl is hoarding thumbtacks. They probably think I have like a whole stash sitting somewhere. Now I am using acrylic paint for each egg, which worked out completely fine, but it does need to be sealed, which I was going to seal them anyways because I didn't really want them to be completely matte. I wanted them to be shiny. Anyways, when working with the eggs and applying the acrylic paint, if you plan on using a hair dryer to dry your paint like I usually do, Please make sure that you remember that the eggs are now metal, and if you use heat from the hair dryer on the eggs, the eggs are gonna be hot. The 
The black egg, I think, was the most tricky because I went on forums and people were like, the egg is purple, some people were like, the egg is black, some people were like, the egg is black with red spots on it, and that's kind of what I went with because that's what I found the most, both from reference, research, and from friends. I also didn't want to make it overly red because then I wasn't completely sure, so I just made the bottom of it red and then just made all the speckles coming up. While those were drawing, I then went back and painted all of the pieces for the chest, which I decided to do a more gold, kind of bronze sort of situation going on. I also mixed in a little bit of brown, that way it wasn't so dramatic against the dark chest. While those dry, yeah, you're gonna have like 60 pieces drying in your kitchen at a time. Just for reference, you're also gonna have to buy 2,000 thumbtacks for those eggs, by the way. I got this really sick dragon-type looking vinyl for the inside of the chest. I, I couldn't really see full reference to the inside of the chest, but even if I had, I honestly wouldn't have cared because this is the fabric I wanted to use for the inside. I also found this at Joann's, and I just took the measurements of the inside of the chest, and I'm going to cut it out. Technically, you should probably sew the pieces together, but I just did it my way, cut out all the pieces and glued it in. It looked fine. I also went in with even more thumbtacks, and lined it by hammering them into the box. I'm then just gluing down the pieces using regular old super glue. Actually, I think I used hot glue in some of the pieces. I used both, definitely both. To make some of the pieces pop and add a little bit more detailing since it was difficult to tell what type of metal was used on the box, I went in with a little bit of silver acrylic paint. And to add the finishing touches, yes, oh yes, you guessed it, more thumbtacks. Ladies and gentlemen, unless you work at the store, unless you work in an office or a school, you will never be in possession of more thumbtacks in your life than you will if you make this chest. Just to make sure that everything stayed together and everything matched, I went over everything using a clear satin finish from Lowe's. And come to think of it, I was gonna make the egg satin, but I did actually go with an extra shiny finish on them. If you would like to see the chest in action, you can go and check out my Danny video, who's also half of a dragon. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any Game of Thrones character requests, please make sure to leave it in the comments below.